actually uh, i have not completed actually i have, i was very busy during this savings uh, holiday savings during this savings uh, hours due to personal reason i was busy so can any okay i can show whatever you completed you just show me just okay. can i share then yeah please go ahead. Uh, until the time he shares, am I? I just to reconfirm. Today is the last day of this session. Today is the last day of the session. Okay. And if we go for another session, that will be a new series. I will connect with you regarding that. If so, we sorry? want to. So if we if we go for another session, that will be a new series. So this okay. is the beginner okay. series, which will be ending today. And if yeah. we go for another session, that will be a, a intermediate series. I will connect with you regarding that. Sure, okay. sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so so I have started. I have uh, I have run my server here in this port. Okay, right. There is some initial data, so I'm able to get fetch the data from the server. Right. So Sushil, you are show, uh, you are sharing. Sorry, I I thought it's uh, uh, Demon. Whatever you completed, could you? Is it feasible for you to show? Yeah, I I can show. I just I means I'm showing. So she can you stop presenting? Okay, okay, sure. I just, I just wanted to understand how many, how many. I mean, right. Nine people only there. Okay, great. Hi, Deepan. Hi. Actually, I was doing actually. Uh, I no worries, had, uh, no worries. I just wanted to know that yes. how how much you understood. So today is the last day, right? Yes, yes. How much yes, you yes. understood? That's what I wanted to know. So yes, whatever I, you completed, just show me. Yes, I have just uh, completed that uh, this uh, interface, the common model. I was uh, making that and implement this uh, means data row. So and our and customer model, I was just uh, means. Uh, uh inputting the data row and doing that work that's it really and and uh, i can show you are oh. importing the data work. okay okay and huh. uh, uh okay and have you done the routing the routing uh i had done yes I mean, earlier just to it uh, right so whatever so total part right you are including in a single file a single project right you are not creating a multiple project yes like yes me. So I yes, just yes. wanted to just solve this error and show the whatever the part you completed. Okay. So any anyone wanted to nominate themselves for showing this, uh, showing showing the assignment. Till Deeraj are fixing error, I just wanted a confirmation. Uh, sorry. Till the till Deeman is fixing the error, we want a confirmation. So Deeraj, have you completed the assignment? Uh, am I might just uh, like a completed like uh, one cancel button uh, only that I have completed in my code. Okay, so Demon, you can stop sharing. Let Deeraj okay. share. Okay. And I, I wanted to understand what is cancel button. Uh, is my uh, skin visible? I mean, mm, yes, yes, I can see. Yes, uh, the only this button, like a uh, delete and cancel button, this I'm implementing. So after, uh, like what happened if you click on the cancel button? Uh, I didn't implement the action on this one actually. Just um, uh, like I implemented this one. <clears throat> but what happened if you click on the cancel button? What is your intended? Uh, what is your ticket saying? So let it be. There is a ticket which asks you to implement cancel button. So what that ticket is saying? Uh, cancel button. Uh, like I'm trying to implement the like uh, after the clicking on this uh, particular entry, it will get to edit. And if I get any uh, modification, and then it can modify and uh, save it again. So this I'm trying to uh, implement. Okay. So on add button, you are trying to save. Okay. On yeah. cancel button, you will be trying to cancel the thing. So there will be an edit button. On the click of edit, you can able to edit the grid, and you can able to. Uh, do it so you can able to you can just Im implement it add so is it add is a common control or you're just using a for each there 
Uh, it's a uh, yes, sir, it's a for each. Uh, yeah, this one ng for. Okay, so basically you have haven't done with a with a common control that we covered. Uh, Grid yeah. control yeah, with that, input and output. Mm, yes, that common control I haven't completed it. Okay. Uh, did you do some like uh, no worries, no worries. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Abhijit, would you like to share? Hello, Abhijit, you there? Okay, let's move further. Sangeeta, have you completed assignment? No, not yet. Actually, I've started. Um, so yeah, but not yet uh, completed anything. Till what part you completed means? Uh, have just you uh, covering uh, the day one and day two. Just I've seen all this uh, again. Then I'll started uh, working on it. So if after that I'll do that. Okay. Ha anyone completed the HTTP call here? Yes, I have did all all of this. Uh, Sorry, who? Who is saying this? I'm Sushil. Except Sushil, anyone completed? I mean, Sushil, I already taken your name, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll speak with your manager, and you, I'll start, I'll, I'll request them to get you on, onboarded, full stack, okay? okay? So, sorry, get you onboarded on the front end. Not a full stack, sorry. You are not a PHP, right? You are HTML. So I'll, I'll request them to onboard you. The, so your part is covered, right? I already taken your name. But I wanted also wanted to send other people name, and that's why I'm curious. Anyone has completed, anyone understood till this part, so I can request their project to give the start giving them assignment. So Sushil is already, you know, I for me it's it's uh, he's he's fit for MAD, so he he know the basic and he can able to learn the advanced things. But if you not complete this assignment, you are not knowing the basics. So how how you can start migrate? I mean, start working as a front end. And uh, this migration should supposed to be start for this not a migration, but this you know transition supposed to start from today. And that's the that's the you know expectation from this course. So as as I'm teaching you, and I'm not covering a you know bigger concept. I'm I was just covering a basic concept. Actually, we just followed the sixty. 40 principle out of which the 60 I only taught you 50%. So there is a 50% still remain. The concept wise 50% still remain. And to master that, you again need to sp uh, spend some months to go through the each concept. Anyway, but you for for you all this path is mandatory. So there is no uh, you know giving up on this path. So I request you. And I encourage you to study months, uh, to to go through the basic part at least. And this course is being designed for the beginner, so you can. And I'll I'll, I'll show you where this course I pulled from. It's just a Udemy course which is for a beginner, which we are going through this tutorial. And I also modify that course to more simple, so that I can deliver the concept uh, or whatever the complexity. I try to remove that from that course. Anyway. I can also point you to that course, but it's not. It means I, I'll not encourage you to buy that course because we already talk, We already gone through it. I'll encourage you to you to, you to go with some basic concept of Angular core and other stuff. Uh, if you wanted to go for a Udemy, Udemy course, uh, search for uh, means we do have an Angular University course with Learning Mate. I'll ask them to. Uh, Angular University one of the course. I'll ask the, uh, that course to share with you. But that what the, the expectation is, you can able to use everything that is defined within the Angular code. Not everything, but at least fifty percent that is defined within the Angular code. Anyway, so let's start with the today's session. So any question you have, so we can uh, we can take a pause and we can go for go through the question. So far we covered. Hello, I'm here, Vedang Right. So I was on leave for last week. Can you explain us assignment? Okay, so that I can complete. So assignment is not something different that the than whatever we cover the during the session. So okay. basically, the expectation is sorry, Vedantika, you wasn't there for entire week last week. Entire week you wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So Vedantika, let me explain you this. So we we supposed to cover the Angular very slowly. 
I mean, to to but it's not feasible because it's a. Uh, uh, I mean, for me also, it's not feasible because I have to move yeah. to the view js from today. So okay. that's why we compact the course for a seven day for a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. So entire week was whatever I taught is the previous week, entire week. So today you will not be learning anything. I'll request you to drop from this uh, class. <laughs> means from yeah. this class because today is the last day better you go with the, all the recording and you okay. try to understand the thing okay so, and the expectation is not different so whatever we taught now i asked them to ask the everyone to go uh, i mean once they once they logged off from the session uh, to practice the same and complete it okay so vedantika why you why you not uh, why it's why it's not feasible for you to attend the previous week sessions uh, there was a function at my home, so that's. Uh, Sorry. There was a function at my home that's uh, okay. driven, No worries, no worries. So you go through the recording, okay. and if yeah. you stuck anywhere, you can drop me a mail. Okay. Yeah. And yesterday, okay, previous session, who asked me? He want he, in his project, he wanted uh, two. There are two API calls, and he wanted to combine them together. Mm. Sorry, on Thursday session, who asked me? There is a uh, th there are two function call and we wanted to combine them together. Devan, is that you? No, I guess Santanu. No, Santanu. No. Let me check list. I can go through it, but if if it uh, it, it was Krishna Nandan. Krishna Nandan, right? Krishna Nandan Krishnanandan is on the call. I no, think, no, why? Because that are advanced things. If I try to cover that, and if you don't don't complete it, the HTTP call by yourself, it's very difficult to get that. Anyway, nevertheless, let's start with something. I'll I'll not count, continue this session for two hours. We'll 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 try to only cover the basics of the RxJS, and uh, I'll ask you, I'll encourage you to first cover these fundamental things so that we can move to the complex part. So let me share my screen. So these are the eight. Hello, is my screen visible to everyone? Yes, it is. Yes. 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 Good. So uh, the, uh, we are looking at a concept called as an interceptor. Anyone aware about what is interceptor? Uh, yes, I know, but I haven't used that. What so, is interceptor? Uh, inter interceptor is used to send modified uh, means data to uh, server. And why we wanted to modify the data to the server? Uh, because, exactly. Correct. What because, you said. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I have to some uh, means uh, inject some token, uh, attach some token for uh, uh, so for to know that the user is logged in or not. Right. So let it be when we do. So get method doesn't have any header. Do you, you know this part, right? Yes. Okay. The post method. Sorry. The get method doesn't have any body, <laughs> not header. Get method doesn't have any. Uh, yes, when we sending a request, that request doesn't have any body in the get method. But it, that's why we send it in the form of uh, query string parameters. But in the post, right, we can send a request with a body and we can include the content within it. Okay. So that is the difference between the get and the post, right? That is basic, very basic. So the get method, you don't have a body. In a post, you have a bot, and where you send a content. Get you is is being sent it to so you can get a data from the server. Post is usually to to add the data to the server. Okay, so that's are the basic difference between the get and the post, right? There is also put, which is used to update. Okay, so these are the basic basic up HTTP uh, verbs or being used. HTTP get, HTTP put, HTTP put. Uh, post right so let it be uh, so let it be uh, you are doing a post right at that time you wanted to send a token or you are doing a gate at that wanted to time you wanted to set a token right but that time also you can add a header so header is not blocked in the gate neither it blocked in the post method so you can simply add your header in the gate and the post as well so why we separately like uh, type an interceptor Or why we go for a separately modifying the 
uh, request and uh, request that we are sending to the server and second can we modify the request Hello. No idea. No idea. Okay. okay. So let's let's go with this. So state and the request are the two things which we cannot modify. So once you create a request, it is a constant request. If it is a modifiable, then consider that someone might you send someone a hundred rupees, and that person somewhat like uh, write a logic and modify that request. And change it to the ten thousand rupees or whatever the amount you want. So that's not feasible. So once the request is created, it cannot be modified. Okay, but in the same application, why we uh, okay now now what we do is what we do inside the interceptor we modify the request. How we modify the request by cloning it by creating another request and not the same request. So you clone the request, you create a new request, and you add the things within the new request. Okay. So far, you are with me. Yes. So clone is just creating a copy of that request, and then you can modify it. So you can now directly modify the request. So I cannot set that request dot set header. Set header equal to new value of the header. So whatever the original request header that will remain as it is. So we clone, we create a separate new request, and then we can add the things that is necessary for that request while we are cloning it. Okay. And once this request is created, it is not modifiable. so we send it further okay so interceptor is nothing but a simple service and now what how you define a service in angular anyone anyone has anyone seen a service in their project and yes, what is service ng gs service right so what is service according to you service is a common logic that uh, we can inject uh, through means dependency injection to our means component okay. service is a common logic till that part is a common logic so like a function or like a component it's a common logic and we inject that to uh, any components com any components any component yes it's acceptable definition anyone has any anyone wanted to add any other things into this definition uh with dependency injection we do, do not do not have to create uh, means instance of the object in the class object in dependency injection we do not need to create the instance of object right because there is a instance single instance being created ha uh, through uh, yes it's yes, angular responsibility to create uh, that object great great so if that is the case when we are saying the injectable right So there is it, is it like a single instance being created or multi can we create a multiple instance of this service yes i get your point that the angular creates the uh, instance of the this service now there are two things right there is a centralized instance that we said or root instance that exists yes. for your entire application so mm -hmm. if you wanted to go for your root instance what you need to do you need to tell the service that provide in root this is been the syntax used to say that hey i wanted to create a single instance so if i go to my here if i go to my utility and here i said that this is what i did it what it means by i'll be creating a single instance of my service okay i'll be creating a single instance of my service and this single instance angular take a responsibility of creating this instance and this instance can be used i mean this instance is provided wherever i refer this service so in any component if i refer the service there is a single instance of that service or of this class is created and that single instance is referred to in all the component now let it be if i wanted to if i don't wanted to have a single instance of this service due to somehow reason 
due to certain reasons or let it be it's, it's our case it's just used inside the this injector is be uh, this interceptor is required just within the customer in that case what we can do we can do go go to the customer module and here also we in the provide we can define our service here in also provide we can defi provides we can define our service so here are previously what we do we def in the providers when we use the dependency injection what we did uh, what we did is we did the provide and use class so instead of that we can just define our service and if we define our service here within the provides it i mean whenever the compo whenever this module is gets instantiated it creates a single instance of this service and serve to the all the component who is using within it okay also if you wanted to create for a component you can specify the provides property here also okay so it so wherever you wanted to use the instance wherever you wanted to create a instance you can just use this provide property and the service name so that this instance of that service is created now let it be if you wanted to use your service that now in our case the http we wanted to use it for the or the interceptor is basically use it for in our cases is used for the entire application so it's better to create a root admin better to better to define it on the root level so if we define it on the root level the single instance being referred to in, within the application so it's like a static so if you heard about the static or we gone through a static definition it is similar or it's not a static basically it's a single term so single instance being referred in every way right and right and that's that's how we do uh, i mean that that is done by the provided property which is set to the root so far with me yes right now let's go to the basic definition what is interceptor so interceptor is nothing but it sits in it sits in our application it's not a part of i mean it shouldn't be the part of other application it sits in the same application where you are making the http call okay now what it does it when you make a http call it goes to the server and it do does the job of get post put delete whatever the function you are specified now if you want in every in in all of this call if you wanted to perform a common logic right everywhere you have to perform a common logic so these common logic goes within the interceptor so in normal cases this common logic is nothing but adding a token because every if you are having a token validation or if you are having a cookie based validation so you need to add a cookie or token within it right or a uh, or a yes so that that is done by that is done by this interceptor now what is mean by uh, like their name suggested this intercept intercept your request when it takes your request it clones it it modifies it so let it be your request number is r1 right it request is request right so wherever you do a request to the server it says that hey request come to me okay it intercept that request then it clone that request means copy and create a new request it creates a it takes a request then it creates a new request oh great it takes a request then it creates a new request okay and then it add the necessary thing into it so here i'm just adding a security key key 1 2 3 so what it does it it takes a request so the, okay how to define a interceptor so first you you understood how to define a service right great now the second part is come uh, i mean the second part is the interceptor so you you just define a class and you need to implement http interceptor interface so when you implement the http interceptor interface it has a request method sorry it has a intercept method which you have to define uh, it enforce a contract to implement intercept method okay so oh, what are they okay so it 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 implements this uh, implement this interface so now you have to define the in this method so let me if i close this save it it enforces you it start it giving the error so it enforces it say implement the interface http uh, in, implement the interface http interceptor so if you click here it implements this method okay and it has a signature where it gives you a request right next thing to do after getting a request 
and it return a observable of type HTTPY, which has a, uh, I mean, where you can, which HTTP event of type any, right? So let's see our implementation. Hmm. So we are taking a request here. And next is what you do, what we wanted to do next after getting a request. Okay. HTTP handler. Handlers are nothing but you can consider the uh, right. So handlers are nothing but something which handles a handles a job. That's that's what it called the handler. Or if you say the file handler, and if you specify the IMG file to it, what it does, it capture that file and it says that hey, what job I wanted to do next after capturing this file. So that is that will be the file handler or the image handler if you define it. So in our case, we are having the HTTP handler. So what is after capturing the request, what we wanted to define what uh, next with that request is managed by the handler. So uh, so it. It, it has a so we we called it next as a variable name so when we say the next dot handle the request right so it sends a request to the server okay so right anyone want to ask a question so it's http handler job is to take further from here exactly so the so basically in the uh, if you have if you looked into the node code right uh, or uh, if you have looked at the backend node code so there are different handler being defined like the controller itself is a handler so it handles your response and take it further if you are uh, so similar way like let it be if I if I say the image handler what that means it takes the image okay and it does it just job there is a job being defined okay to modify that image that is being executed on that image. And then after that, whatever the response of that job is being returned, right? So that is called as a handler. So handler is nothing but a middleware. Okay, so I, I found a right word for it. So handler is nothing but a middleware. Okay, so what it does it, it takes a job, then it execute, uh, sorry, it, it, handles a, it handles a request or it handles something. So let it be if an image handler, then it handles the image. It takes that image, okay, execute a job on it, and then returns whatever the output to it. Uh, output that is that is being executed on the uh, that is I mean the output of that job is written uh, by the handler. So handler is nothing but a middleware. It's it sits in middle of uh, wherever it been uh, for which it's created. So it hears the HTTP handler. So it handles the HTTP request. It executes this hand. Uh, it executes this job on it. So it's clone the request. Right, it sets the header, and then again, it pass the whatever the output of this, it pass it further. So far with me. Yes. So it and return it to interceptor. Right. So it is offered. It's it's given in the intercept method. Okay. As an input parameter. So do we need to pass this input parameter? No. The interceptor. Once you configure this interceptor, you uh this whenever you send any request. And if you set a debugger here, automatically the debugger will get hit. You don't need to do your you don't need to call the intercept method. It's not your job to call the intercept method. It's whenever you do the post, get, or whatever thing, it automatically the control comes to here. So far with me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So you don't need to do anything here. You just need to write this code. Okay. And provide this service, right? In a, as a root service. And whenever you perform a get, post, put, delete, all the time the control will come here. Now, what what to execute here, right? This is the normal syntax. Now, what to execute here is up to you. So you can just take a request and uh, you can just handle a request and just that's it. You cannot do anything. However, if you wanted to perform any logic, you can choose to perform that logic. So what I did is I taken a request, I clone that request, I had the header into it, right? And I return that request back to the server. So far with me? Yes. Yes. I request you to go through this code and let me know if you if you if you get confused at any point of time. 
there are a lot of things being involved here right but that this is very simple syntax it means if someone ask you what is interceptor it nothing but it intercept the request it modifies it it copies it it clones it you can add your custom logic into it like if you wanted to set the header let it be you have a so some some cases you have a tenants right so the tenants are nothing but a uh, virtual separation of the database so every time you query you just write a query select data from the student where student name is this that is your simple query or whatever that is query being sent from your or let it be a graphql query or whatever it means you just wanted to pass a string right uh, but that string doesn't contain a tenant so what you do because the tenant is being stored in the uh, i mean the tenant is uh, being stored in the uh, let it be in our case let it be it stored in the session or let it be store the store in the our local state okay so when the tenant is stored in the local state you just uh, you just fetch the tenant from the local state and here you like the interceptor to include that tenant as part of your each request so that the server can understand this request is coming from which tenant so in tenantize application this interceptor is also used to fetch the tenants so in our uh, in most of the cases or it's a generic use of interceptor where you need to add a uh, token for the request however in some case some case cases it's very rare however the some cases the request is not being made from the user it's being made from the service itself or within the application itself at that time application uses its own credential to call, to call the server so that time you need to have a multiple interceptor and based on that you need to inject the interceptor correctly but that is being very rare case on the front end side but that case also observed in some application anyway so the basic purpose of interceptor is to just clone a request and whatever the the extra logic you wanted to add within your request the common logic you wanted to add for your request that you can add here consider please make a note it is it is the request that we are modifying not the response that's come back from the server okay so request that is goes to the server that we are modifying and the request is made by the front end application or is made by the our browser okay browser is made the request to the server so when the browser is making the request to the server every common thing or all the all the request that is done by the browser has any common thing that can be included within the interceptor and please note this http interceptor method because that's being used to uh that that's being used to create a interceptor your own interceptor so uh, my i have a question hmm. so is this in interceptor is applicable uh, to the post patterns only or we hmm. can implement in get get patterns also get part every part get post put delete whatever do you write right it is okay. it is applied on the http request so whatever that is being requested so you you do a post you requested something right so it will come here you do a get it also come here here so your every request will come here Okay. all the outgoing request will capture through this exactly so if some request don't want to add some values we can we are modifying now so in that case or every 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 request should attach this header part so that is the that is that is what i told you right so basically uh, there might be different uh, interceptors right. right so basically that in the, let it be your project has a customer and a supplier supplier doesn't require any token it's anonymous okay, okay. let's right. take a hypothetical example but a customer require a token in that right. case what you will do you will not do a not uh, specify this as a single instance so you will okay. create a service and in the customer module you will inject this service so you will go to the customer module and in okay. the in this provide you will inject this service in the provide uh, okay so in the provide providers you will inject the service so you will say this is my http service so let it be what is my service name i forgot it let me go back and copy it quickly so within this module only that instance right, right. so whatever the cloud component defined within this module this service can be used for that okay fine so this is our main module so here i cannot define it because this is the main is a bootstrap module so whenever you create a root instance it automatically get injected within the main module or bootstrap module but when you wanted to do it for specific you can just copy it here and that's it that's it everything is taken care by the angular
So it will create an instance and whatnot and whatnot. So my interceptor is, I guess, already defined here. Okay. Okay. Hmm. That's it. Sir. So, but most of the cases, most of the project, your every request required to be uh, required to be have. Uh, I mean, your every request should have a token, and you will notice the interceptor being injected in the root. Okay. And it's like a single token. The logged in token is being passed to the server. But in some cases, the application might have a other token or let it be admin token being passed instead of the user token. In that case, you can have a separate instance of your inter, uh, interceptor for your component or your module based on your requirement. Right. So everyone is familiar with intercept now can able to implement in the project. I'll yes. give you this code if you want. I'll also be mailing you today before UOD uh, the, all the assignments that we completed so far. So you can also start using them and you can start creating a project using it. I'll urge you to, so after this, after some, I mean, after a five or 10 minutes, we will be moving into the RxJS and I'll, RxJS is not simple. So you can you can neglect RxJS, but it's important if your project is using it. So I, I just want a few data from you. So Sushil, in your project, RxJS is being used? Yes, in some somewhere I have seen. OK, so basically then it's important. So you also need to dig deep into the RxJS. OK, though it's though it's complex, you need to understand it. So let's let's try to move to the RxJS. Just give me a minute. I'll just bring my water bottle and we'll start. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I'm back. So let me share my screen again. So, okay. Right. So I modify the code of our eight day to use our exists. So let's go step by step, right? Let's not rush for it. So let me go to the so what why we use RxJS? Anyone anyone has heard the RxJS and why we go for it? Or if if any anyone hears about the uh, Redux saga, anyone heard about the saga word? Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Right. So what do, what do you why why we go for RxJS? What are the fundamental offer by it? It helps to manage the HTTP requests. Exactly. But we also have the HTTP, right? So why we fundamentally go for RxJS? RxJS yeah, is used to reduce code because RxJS is a reactive extension of, uh, it's a library for Java, the JavaScript. OK, OK. But why it's not, I, I agree with you. It's reduce code. It's make the code look more simpler. Okay, then comparative to your, you have a uh, lot, lot of big codes, right? So code can be a uh, more simpler, but mm -hmm. while we are making our code simpler, right? Yes. I mean, uh, it's still, we can ask the, ask to, uh, you know, write a bigger code or let it be the bigger code. Okay. 
but what are the fundamentally we go for gare is that the only reason yes accept it okay the first reason is taken is there any other reason right it can handle multiple requests true it can handle the multiple requests or you can merge your multiple requests right right is there any other advantage or basically what is the rhs you, if if i if i ask you to summarize what is the rhs or it it's it's a way of writing a design right it's a way of writing your code so it's it's a particularly a design pattern okay and why why we use a rhs because it makes a life simple so instead of having your subscribe method and writing a code within it right you you need you can write your simple code one after other we where it makes the code more readable like he mentioned the why the code is readable or why we go for rhs because your code is why the code is lesser because you can start writing your code as you write your normal code the synchronous code synchronous code the same code you can write your async code you can write it in the same way okay rhs is mostly suitable for a bigger project that is also true because when you introduce the rhs it include include a dependency on the rhs okay so why when when you do the rhs for a bigger project what why why it simplifies the life because you can write the code in a in a linear fashion of one after other right and you don't need to think of the callbacks call up callbacks are being reduced using the rhs it also avoids the concept of uh, a code here it also avoids the concept of a code here. so we'll we'll see that okay but the theoretically you should be knowing this it's avoid the because you have the subscribe method within that you will be having a subscribe method or there there are uh, i mean you and you need to unsubscribe to it at a certain point of time let it be you have a subscribe method and you forgot forget to unsubscribe and you just you just do the incrementing of uh, let it be you are just in, uh, you just have a i right and you increment that i Uh, using your observable, and you have a subscribe to it, and where you where you take the iteration of the i each time you increment it. Now, some let it be you unload your component in between due to certain condition, but the still increment of i is going on in the background because that's that's where you subscribe to it, right? So, your subscribe method is listening to the increments of i. So, if you do the console log at that time in the console, you can say that the i is moving its value. or i is moving the from 10 11 12 13 14 or its i value is getting increment because you are subscribed to it as as uh, i mean to avoid this problem you need to unsubscribe it now there is a lot uh, there is a lot of subscription then there will be a lot of unsubscription also you need to write so rx just avoid this situation making the code in a linear fashion so far with me yes yeah, so in case of rx js we don't need to unsubscribe Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So let's see the RHS in action. And it's very simple to understand. There is no complexity in it. It's very simple. So. Okay. So you need an import for RHS. Also, it's recommended to check your. node version if you are using the rhs so you can check it like to the minus version i believe so mine is 18.14.2 so it's recommended to have a version 18 or above that for a node also in your project dependencies uh in a package or js check if you have the rhs because i don't know which versions of angular you are using So I started with the latest Angular version. So I do have a RX just installed in my uh, package five. So what version you are on? Which versions of Angular you are using for your project? I am using nine Angular nine. Could you please check quickly? Do you have RX just there? How to check? Oh, no well, just this current project or the existing. Okay, so in my project, I am having the RHS seven point eight point zero. Okay, 
and uh, we have seen this what is this steel shine is doing so whatever the latest version you know at the end we are already we are downloading that instead of downloading the zero one okay so i am having the 7.8.0 then if i go to let's so previously what we did we we load the customer from our database right and for that we did the go, get call so we'll replace that get call with the rsa okay so it will be very simple and you will notice that we are returning the observable so our component will be always written as observable in the case of rxjs design pattern and our html will be listening to that observable and it will be uh, on the html it will be resolving that observable and then it fetches the data within the observable okay so so and how to okay so i here in pre previously we are having a customer model but now i am having a observable of customer model so far with me yes and have you noticed this dollar syntax yes yes so this dollar syntax is used to define an observable so it tells that hey this variable is nothing but a observable that's it okay. that's it but so if you notice any i mean if you notice any variable with a dollar sign after that you will you will be get to know that hey it's a observable mm -hmm. or before it some people include before it also so it's like a generator function so you include the star at end or uh, at the beginning of the variable so it's it's acceptable both the cases you can have a dollar customer model or customer model dollar i use it at a so in in this example you will see it we have used it at the end this dollar set that okay so this is how i define the observable so and then this is a customer model so if you go on through our, our tutorial so far we every time we are defining a customer model and customer models okay right. and uh, we will be focusing on the customer models at this point of time because here we are fetching the data from the server okay. we will be applying a fetch on it or we are getting the data from the server okay so this is the customer models right and when you define this observable here how your html will change so everything within the html will be changed so now you cannot directly define the html like our previously okay so what i did is i define the ng container okay inside the ng container i write the ng and which is uh, and uh, you know inside the njf i just use a syntax which is used to convert to observable or which used to resolve the observable so this is the async pipe so this is the async pipe so what so when you use the pipe syntax it modifies the behavior or it modifies the or it formats the content that you give to this pipe so this pipe can be a date pipe this pipe can be of any type so whenever if you if you says that hey Ah, so whenever I'm using this pipe, so let it be. Let's let's try to address this syntax. What this syntax is doing. So why we we are using pipe here? Right, because we have the observable, right? And yes. we wanted to convert this observable to a normal value or resolve this observable to customer. So what is type of this observable? This observable is of type customer list. Okay. Mm -hmm. But actually, on the HTML, we are not rendering the customer. Uh, we are not rendering the observable of customer. We are rendering the customer array. So we need to resolve this observable to customer, uh, customer okay. array. Okay, and that is why we are using a sync pipe there, and that does that job of resolving observable to a customer array. So okay. far with me. Yes. Cool. So when you go to this HTML, right? So, a sync internally subscribe that observable. What? Right. So that's that's the job of. I mean, this is the predefined pipe. So what it does internally, I don't know. What it does internally, I don't know. But if you use this pipe, it assures you. Or when you use this pipe, it assures you because there are a lot of keywords we need to go through. So okay. what it does internally, we shouldn't be caring about. So whenever we are using this a sync, so it it gives you this customer model. Right. Yes. You can say that the thing is internally subscribed as a value, as a array. Right, as a array. Okay. 
or in simple word word it just resolve that observable okay. so when you are saying a customer model with a sync pipe it resolved it to a customer model so when we say that hey use it as as a customer model okay and when we are and that's how we create our customer model now we got a object that is customer model instead of customer model as observable okay now we can use a customer model within our ng4 and then we can render the customers code name and amount right right so this is customer model is nothing but a object of customer so uh, object of customer now let's go back to our component so previously if you notice our component is cluttered with the http code or the http calls but this is not a job actually the uh, the job i mean the execution of uh, i mean executing the http is not a or a, making a server call is not a job of our component component so it should be delegated to someone so we delegate this job to the customer service so let's look at our customer service which is a core part so in the service folder so in the service folder or this is also you should be also doing this in your project so wherever you are in your project let me under this because i wanted to define it as a oh no 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 let it be okay so whenever in your project you wanted to do uh, when you wanted to perform the http call it advisable to have a service for it instead of doing it within the component okay so now remember this whenever you wanted to perform the http call it advisable to create a separate service for this okay so we are creating a customer service so customer service is taking responsibility of performing the http call that is required so in the constructor of the customer service i am injecting the http client So far with me, yes. constructor of the component service. I am injecting the HTTP client. Should be defined as a public. My bad. Okay. So I can have the HTTP to be used within it. Now, now whatever our you know whatever our DTOs and everything. i i copied the from our component to here so these are nothing but our dtos where we are uh, these are nothing but our mappers where we are mapping data row to the customer okay here we are what we are mapping is data row collection to the customer collection and here we are mapping data row sorry customer to data row okay so these are our dtos so there should be another dto which uh, anyway so these are our our dtos now let's move on to load all customer okay so load all customer what it's written it returns a observable of customer list so far with me you you have understood this signature right so what load all customer in previously our our load all customer what it does it return returns the customer list from the database where is our database it exists in the json file db.json so far with me yes so we have a customer database right so these database when you are doing the get call it gets the customers data right and there is a observable big data and we subscribe to that observable so instead of instead of that this service will be having load all customers okay which returns a observable of customer list okay and what we are doing we are performing a simple http call for a uh, i mean we are simply performing the http call but there is something different here we are using a pipe right this is nothing but offered by rxjs so if you go here right so this is nothing but a simply offered by the rxjs okay and what you are saying that hey do a get call for me you are saying to the http do a get call for me and then i'll be using a pipe on to you and i'll be using a map which is a uh, right so these all the functionality this map is not a uh, the map that you apply on a array this map is offered by the rxjs 
So if you notice, it is node module. It is present within the RHS. So if you similarly go for this pipe, it's not offered by. It's not a. Uh, I mean, it's not an Angular pipe, or it's not a. Uh, I mean, you are not importing it within the Angular code. It's you are importing from the RxJS. So there is a RxJS model within for within that you implement the pipe. So the syntax you do is whenever you I mean when you, instead of subscribe you will be saying simple pipe, and within that you will be taking a response that is given by the uh, given by the HTTP whatever the get call you are taking that response and you just do the operation on top of it. Like if you wanted to do a filter, if you wanted to do a searching on it or whatever. In our cases, what we do, our response is a data. Uh, our response is a data row. That's what we get. Okay. So we convert this data row into the customer. So we use a mapper. Okay. And then there is a shared reply. Why we use a shared reply? Because if you are, I mean, if you on the UI, if you are calling the twice, it makes a twice subscribe to it. So let it be. You are taking, you are calling this load customer, okay? And after loading the customer, you will be filtering it again to show show the customer which is uh, which are active and to show the customer which are inactive. So when you are applying this filter, it makes a two separate HTTP call to the server, right? And when you say, when you say the shared reply, so it knows that hey, this is the same observable being called a toy. So it use the user it, instead of calling it twice, it just says that hey, on this data, on the top of this data, there is being filter being applied, and it avoids calling it twice, and it gives the entire data to it, and only the filter is being performed on the component side, and that's why we say say the shared reply. So far with me. Yes. Sir. Right. So the what shared reply does is it avoids calling the observable toys or it's about I mean there is a multiple subscribe to it or on the UI if you notice a two subscribe to the same observable right due and using its data there being another filter being applied on top of it so what instead of having a multiple subscribe or multiple uh, sorry the multiple subscribes making a multiple call to the server so let it be on the UI we subscribe this load customer we subscribe toys. On the UI, okay, or on within the component, we subscribe to it and then again subscribe to it, right? So logically, it's making a two separate server call, but in that two separate server call, we are getting the same data, and then we are applying filter on top of it, right? Yes. If we wanted to find the all active user and inactive user, so what it does, this shared reply, what it does, instead of calling the, instead of calling our, uh, I mean, instead of the both subscribe or the two subscribe instead of calling that to the back end twice what it does it uh, it just calls i mean for a both the subscribe it it provides the same data and it doesn't call it twice or in other cases it it shares the shares the reply for both of them for both the subscribe okay okay so this is the load customer and where we are using a pipe and we share the share reply now this pipe now how it's being referred it's very simple so if you go to your customer component am i in the right project sorry load all customers yes that is how let me go to the component let me see how the gate is doing. Yeah. So what I'm doing here in the gate from server, we are calling it within the ng or in it. Okay. We are calling within the ng on it in it this method. And here in the customer component, what we are doing is, uh, sorry, what in this customer component, right? In the construct, uh, customer component constructor, we have injected our service. So this customer component has a constructor, name as a customer, and here we are injected our service. Okay, and the customer service is being referred here, and we are calling load all customer method. 
and when what this load customer all method does it returns the observable of type customer list and this is being returned to this component okay and when it's written what we are doing we assign it to the customer models and how the customer model which is a list of observable is being read if you go to the html it is, it is being uh, using the ng container it is being referred yeah okay now let's see how we can put a data sorry my bad so far you are with me right you understand right how this is being read yes yes any confusion here it's very diff i mean it's it's observable you cannot just see it at the first time i mean it's rxjs is not something that you see first time and you understand everything you have to stay with it for a for a longer period of time to get it end to end you need to stay it with a longer period of time so the ng container is offered uh, ng container is a is a component which is offered here and which has a ng if where we are saying that hey when you see this observable use a async on top of it get me a get me a customer models which is not a, i mean which is a result of resolve resolvement of this observable okay which which is resolve uh, re, resolve i mean sorry my bad right so which is where you are resolving this observable to a customer model okay and once you resolved it you will be rendering it onto the ui in a list so here we'll be getting it let me so let me click it or oh, okay. refresh it go to the customer and you get it the customer list from the database so here we are separated it or uh, here we are just reading the observable and we are not reading the uh, actual com uh, actual strongly type so if you notice here in the html we we are reading the custo uh, uh, customer model which is of type of observable of customer list and then we are iterating through it and then we are iterating through it that's simple so let me comment it again and let's focus on other part let's focus on how we can insert this into the database so here also to get the data we are also using the same pipe async pipe so everywhere wherever you see the observable you will see this pipe uh, i mean this async pipe is being used so please remember this async pipe okay so this async pipe is used on the customer model to resolve this customer model which is of type observable of customer observable of customer and we are resolving it to we are resolving it to the customer so using the async pipe we are resolving to the customer okay so if you notice here it's not observable customer model is of type customer and then we are using the ng form on top of it okay everything is as it is now let's see how the post is being performed so if i go to the surveys so we are saying that here is partial it's being done for a put okay and this is a uh, this is we saving a new customer so here we are focusing as we getting the uh, customer from our html so once we get a customer from our html we pass it to the post right that's what we see how we use the http post we pass it to the post and then we use a pipe because that's we get a data row for return from the customer and then we pass it to it and convert this data row into into customer object right so let's focus back here so simple what we do it we we pass this uh, customer object and you know uh, it's written the observable of type customer and that is being returned from the uh, this service so it just return the observable of type customer and using this pipe everywhere you can see we are using the shared reply and in your project also you will be using this shared reply everywhere because you don't want a multiple subscribe of it to create a multiple http calls so that's why you will be using a shared reply everywhere okay okay, okay. so it uses the pipe and it uses the map operator 
this is the common syntax you will notice everywhere should please look at this syntax the pipe then map then the share reply this is the common syntax being used when you are playing with the rx js hmm. so far with me yes yes so are, are we using uh, interceptor here no interceptor is are we using the interceptor here no interceptor is being used very separately it's being used to uh, intercept your every request so in, in spite of being i mean what the the uh, rxjs is not making your http call your http client http http client is making your http call okay we rxjs so, is not making the http call your http client is making your http call okay so still we can get, capture the http exactly, exactly. so in spite okay. of being whatever the design pattern without rxjs or rxjs your http yes. request is captured by your http uh, interceptor captured by the http interceptor and that is a that is that is we are used in our okay. yes correct so that's how it is and please please look at this syntax html syntax async i'm not going into the depth of this because i'm i'm sure even if i go here it's very difficult to grasp it at the first go and i want you to complete the first your uh, assignment i was hoping that you will complete it and then we can go into the depth of the rx by looking at the different things or we can explore the store but i first uh, encourage you to do this once you complete it right i'll i'll encourage you to complete your assignments once you complete your assignments everything the part till the end you try to implement the rxjs okay using this ng container and using the ngf where you will saying that hey and using the async pipeline replace your code uh, with rxjs code and if that starting working please tag it to me right send me a mail saying that hey i completed the assignment and then we can go to the next step or then we can deep dive into it because if we go now it's it's like a waste of time it's like just a of i mean watching a movie for 10 15 minutes and then forgetting about or let it be watching a movie and forgetting about it so you will you will you will not able to get the uh, get the syntax of it you will not able to get the gist of it so what i'll request you to complete your assignment so we can move further with a uh, uh, some advanced topic or we can we can start mailing your project and based on your project code i'll 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 conduct a another session with you okay so that's that's what we can do also if you if you if you wanted to learn like let it be someone ask me hey how we can combine the multiple http calls so rxjs is being used to combine the multiple http call so there is a there is a operator you can use to do that that is a fork that you need to uh, that is being used to combine the multiple http call i'll show you it's very simple and please guide us how to handle errors within our projects http errors okay so rxjs also has a uh, error my bad so basically rxjs is like uh, how uh, i mean the subscribe has a error method rxjs also allows you to handle the error and uh, Use, okay so this is not rxjs so that's why it doesn't allow so it also allows you to handle the error and it it breaks your entire pipe so here just give me a minute
instead of catching uh, within our components can't we catch in our interceptors and do something centralized okay so you are what you are saying you wanted to catch with in your interceptor no that is not feasible or interceptor because no, no. every uh, request no, no. let's mm. let's take a step by step okay what every request goes to the interceptor okay but when that request is initiated right yes. and that is a request not a response so response we can't to catch catch through interceptor no okay so you wanted to write an interceptor to catch your response all, error, all uh, response and then uh, for every response you have some error that you want to log manage that in the center yes. let Something. me it's not feasible you state answer but let me look into it who asked this question and i'll drop you a mail regarding that i'm sushil sushil right i'll drop you a mail regarding that sushil thank yeah. you yeah. so yes. where rxjs has the own way of doing the handling and it's very simple so what you can create is you create a, i'll tell you how the rxj is being designed to handle the errors so there is a separate service is being created okay and i'll also send you the example of it you mark my word okay so there is separate service being created that is called a error service so have you seen the loader in your project yes so whenever the stp call being load right so similar right. way there is a service being created now you set a boolean and false value to it right and you pass the error message now we have our error message so similar that service is being created and what it does it wherever your error get in your program whenever your error get there is a error summary that is being registered on top of somewhere in your pro, here or anywhere where you wanted to show your error so let it be it's okay so we change something so it stop it working so let it be in in this case it's being some error summary is being registered somewhere and you make a change like everywhere your form is invalid so the error message is only shown at the, your error summary and not at the other place right. or similar way there is other let it be http call error occur that is also shown on to your top and not at when the call fail uh, there is a separate div being added at the end it's not like that so okay. how how that centrally being is managed so you right. create a separate uh, you create a separate service which is taking responsibility of managing this error or which is uh, storing this error and that's how the there there also the rxs help so it helps uh, it's allow you to create a kind of uh, it allow you to create a common service for error entry okay. yeah, that's that's true but it also allow you to show the html uh, i mean yes it, okay. uh, and you subscribe to that service or you you use that service uh, to update your central point where you wanted to show the error so it you create a separate component like a error uh, error summary and within that summary you inject your service and that service is taking job of collating the error from everywhere and it displays there okay and through that we can subscribe exactly everywhere okay exactly and you being used i mean yeah so this here there are they what they done is they do the pipe and yes. catch error sorry this is this yeah. is what i want to yeah. So this, is being, this is being offered by the RX. So if you looked at the cache error, this is being offered by the RX. So if I go into the definition of it, if you look, this cache error is offered by the RX. It is the RX operator. It's not a cache error of our try catch, right? Or it's not a catch of the subscribe. It is offered by the RX. Right. and this this you know cut your pipe line i mean whenever you get a error here you you trigger this and here you can choose to have a different thing okay now now the service that you will be creating you will be injecting here somewhere okay let me see quickly the syntax that is saying there getting the error console log and throw error this throw error is being used to terminate the pipeline of uh, uh yeah it is being used to the terminate the pipeline so let it be this this pipeline is being created and within this pipeline we are doing the multiple operations but these operation should be terminated right whenever we get the error and that's why we throw the error to this so it used to terminate the pipeline 
this pipeline that we have created, right? So this is the same syntax. So if I just copy this entire code, it's look good to me. And let me copy it here somewhere, right? Right, so this catch error is being used to handle the exceptions that we seen. And like we say is that here, we can also have our instances of uh, logger, five, main logger, uh, console logger, or whatever the logger instances we created. And then there is a throw error, which is being used to throw the error. And this throw error method uh, terminate this pipeline. And that's why this throw error being used. So this pipeline gets cut. And whatever the exception we get, it's being passed further. Uh, who asked this question? Sorry. I'm Sushil. Sushil, yeah. So Sushil, that's what that's why it's used. OK, thanks. And okay. let's compile to ETP call. Yes. I'll, I'll show you the fork that is being used. Okay. So let it be there are two get call, right? And you wanted to combine them together. So there is. So we'll be using merge map along with a fork. So in G4, we are doing a get, then pipe, then merge map, merge map, P. Uh, instead of being merged, it's being performed as a merge map because we want to use our get done to homework, but not our join form. Yes, that's what we want. It is it is called as a join. Uh, fork is a type of a join. So let it be we wanted to perform a two, two HTTP call, right? So there are two HTTP calls. Let it be you wanted to join them. How you will be joining them? So you will be just performing a two HTTP call, and instead of subscribing them, you will be saying the fork join. Okay. And the fog join, what it does, it join the two, uh, join the two observables. So it joins the two observable and create a single observable to which you can subscribe to. Okay. So it joins a two observable and create a single observable to which you can subscribe to. Now on this top of this fog join, you can instead of using the subscribe, you can also use the pipe and then merge back. Okay, to get the data out of it, like here they have used. Or you can use a map to get the data out of it. Okay, so like like we whatever we have done here, it's also applicable on top of the uh, fork join, like here. So here, if you notice, right? So when we are doing it, we are doing the pipe and then we are doing the map, right? So this is same applicable when we are doing the. Uh, Fork join. So on the fork join, also you can dot pipe is is also applicable, and you can define your pipes or you you can def define your pipeline where you can do in the either doing the merge map or you are doing the map. So far with me. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Any questions so far? No. How many people are left? One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. So we started this session with 30 people, right? Approximate. Yes. Yeah, nine or ten, I guess. Why this is being uh, why it is done? Because I am also low energy this today, today's session. I was hoping that you all people will complete it. 
I mean, this is recorded session, but I I'll tell you the reality. If you're not able to complete the basic thing, na, it it will be a very problematic for you, because I I am there to help you. However, you need to show your enthusiasm from your side. Right. I was hoping that multiple people will complete it like Sushil completed, and I was hoping that I'll 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 note down their name, and then I'll I'll go for our exam. So the beginning is very very you know. uh it is not helping me to go towards the advanced as well actually i guess team need some more time to practice and because uh, if they practice they face some errors then they are stuck with that okay how much time they need uh, i don't sure about the people but okay definitely. let's start uh, let's start with uh, demon how much time you need i demon you showed a lot of enthusiasm when we started first and why yes, yes, I, I i i noticed that you are also grasping the thing However, your yes. your energy drops at the end of the session. Any specific? No, 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 my energy not drop. Actually, I was uh, very busy to in, with my project also. Makes uh, sense because I have present uh, two but, project. But yeah. notice, but note this, right? In your project, what you are working as, you are working as HTML and the CSS part, right? And you yes, supposed sir. to uh, take a additional responsibility. Yes, yes, yes. So, so I, I am very enthusiastic. Yeah, I, because I got didn't got time, so I just uh, didn't complete. I. I can. I will complete and show you. I uh, mean, today uh, night, if you want. Uh, no, no, no. I don't don't spend a night. But I'm just curious how much time you require more. Uh, for no, I uh, don't think about time. I just uh, for uh, for the assignment. Right to complete everything. So for completing, I can complete it by today. Complete it okay. by today. So let it. Yeah. Let's take a three days buffer time. Okay. Dheeraj, how much time you require to complete the assignment? Hello, Dheeraj. Okay, so Dheeraj, I guess, uh, mute himself and gone out. Okay. Sangeeta, how much time you require to complete the assignments? Um, am I actually? I'm. Uh, I'm having also my project work uh, simultaneously. Makes I'm sense. From the, Considering yeah. that, you can tell ten days, fifteen days is fine for me. nothing i mean it's not it's not i mean something i can check you after that yeah yeah uh, surely and uh, for that actually i need some time because i am a accessibility background from coming from accessibility background so that's why i need some time to you know grasping all this join the you join uh, uh javascript sessions right no i have i have not actually i am not join over there i just started that angular js part okay then it's very that's why yes things. that's why actually i'm taking it slow that's why i'm going to the revise and then i'll start uh, okay, so let it be for let it be if you are putting a good effort it's a 15 days sufficient is not that is not far I mean it's not to look logical yeah 15 days is sufficient abhijit how much days required for you to complete uh, i mean to complete the assignment Well, this particular thing it will take at least ten to fifteen days. Okay. okay. Actually, okay. that's why I know I wanted to say, am I? Because I haven't uh, okay, joined. Okay, noted. That. All feedback is noted. I'm, I'm, I'm noting down this feedback. Okay. Let's, let's wait for a fifteen days. Unless and until it changes to thirty days. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to say there something that, um, uh, am I? Is that possible that uh, I can get the uh, two videos from that uh, days? Because I didn't attend those, uh, you know. Uh, the sessions. Let me check the Vue.js uh, agenda because Vue.js is session is started and their first prerequisite is to cover the JavaScript. So let me get that agenda and if if it's feasible, I'll share share a link with you so you can join the tomorrow's Vue.js session mm -hmm. if that includes the JavaScript. So you can at least start getting the JavaScript, right? Yeah, because it's it, uh, it's kind of a tough for me uh, to start uh, you know Angular JS. Also, Also, I'll include a. Uh, uh, also, I'll try to include a JavaScript, uh, you know, uh, tutorial within our our Udemy course, so you can uh, start going through it. Yeah. And uh, yes, for you, it's lot of effort. I understand. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's a problem for me. So yeah. Siddesh, how much time it will take for you to complete it? Actually, I completed half. Uh... Half, but I miss all the code also. <laughs> I'm doing practice. Share your screen. How much you completed? One second. I'll
actually i facing some kind of phases so one second Can you able to see my screen? Yes, I can able to see your screen. Bootstrap model catch error error. So you are trying to handle the centralized error. Okay, move uh -huh. that catch up, move that catch up, and it should be on the bootstrap model. Where? Easy, Bilal. Okay, catch up. No, I think I missed some code. Actually, I uh, in ABCD I tried this. One second. Remove that catch. When master. Remove that catch. Comment that catch. Line number seventeen. Comment it. Comment this. Okay. Okay. Now try to run your code. Where is your customer module? And why you wanted to? Uh, okay. Where is your bootstrap module? Bootstrap module. It's a customer module, right? Yes. Bootstrap module is a startup module. So which module you wanted to start? So you code. Your code has a lot of errors. What what's happening? Ah, uh, WhatsApp. I don't know what's happened right now. I just then uh, sorted my code over here, and then try to solve the error uh, to seeing uh, your from uh, uh, first of your video. Do you have a lot of work in your project? Uh -huh. Okay, I'll I'll try to complete in ten days. No, hold on, hold on. Sushil, do you have a lot of work in your project? Yes, we have, but we need to take time now. I yes, okay. I wait till. Two to three people. So I have another request for you, if if it's feasible. So if you get an hour or two, you spend an hour or two with your some of your colleagues, right? Those who are yes. subscribed for this session, check with them, try to solve their errors. And if there are complex things, right? If these people are you 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 think that this person is stuck a lot, I mean, he need a lot of help here to go ahead, right? Then, or this person has done a lot of things, but he is he requires something, right? So you can drop me a mail specifying that person what what exactly that person requires. So yeah, can... today Sabnam has ping and I have resolved her error. So people might need to reach out to me so that I can. Exactly. Know. So I request everyone. I mean, uh, if these people, so Siddesh, you can pass this word to your team and other people also yes, pass yes, this yes, word yes, and yes, work yes, together. So that in a 15 days you can also grow. So let's meet after a 15 days, right? So yes. I'll, I'll I'll expect that you will people will go through the assignment. And after 15 days, I'll again schedule the RSGS session, and I'm hoping that you will complete the assignment. And there, I can go with a full uh, full speed of explaining you the RSGS. And let it be, I'll 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 schedule the session for three and four days just to focus on the RSGS, so we can go in the depth about the RSGS. But before we go to that, I expect you people to learn uh, do do a few things. Else, it's very difficult to uh, tell you about these pipes and everything. Right. Okay, so we 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 there are some topics that I wanted to take you to, like the guards and uh, authentication authorization. So that are the second part I am planning for these sessions. But before we go in for a second session, I want you to all to be migrated to the MAD, right? So that once you migrate to the MAD or you all to be part of the MAD to go for this session. So I can I can I can send the session link to the entire MAD and uh, including you. And let's go with some advanced topics. So those who wanted to, so there might be a uh, software engineer, senior software engineers who wanted to learn this advanced topic. So that that's what we can do. However, I'll hi, highly encourage because I wanted you to provide the hand holding to drop me a mail with whatever the query you are having. And those who are saying, those who are saying, I mean, like Sushil mentioned that he needs something the error handling. So I'll be sending him the error handling store. So there is a logic through which. You can do the error handling. So I'll be writing a code for it, and I'll be sending him separately, right? And I'll be I'll be giving him the entire kind of a blog where I'll explain this thing, so he can read and understand. Even if you're not able to, especially if you're not able to understand that blog, it's fine. We can connect one to one, and I'll get your doubts solved. However, this one to one connection to be established, I want you to put an effort from your. Yeah, it was my efforts first, right? Right, exactly. So, so that's what I encourage you to everyone. And on that note, let's close this session. I'll hope you all the best for your your journey into the Angular. Okay, and whatever the query you have, you can drop me a mail. You can book my time. However, don't book a time and say that hey, explain me what ng model is doing because that's what the basic and expected from you. So I'll encourage this 15 days to put your effort to 
get these eight concepts clear and the basic of rhs whatever we covered today right get right. these things clear and if you stuck anywhere if you put in a effort and if you still stuck book my time book a slot with me and i'll help you to solving the problem like like siddesh you have the basic code error right don't expect i mean i can still sit with you but let it be that part is very basic i expect you to put some effort and get it resolved there are few yes, yes and i will get it resolved okay sure thank you sushil and uh, deepan i also expect from you because you also have some yeah. project of code uh, running in your yes, local yes yes right? yes to so sit yes. with these people try to help them out okay sure so whatever the surrounded by you please please get a r or two for them yes sure sure yes yes sure ame and if you see, if you think that a person is badly stuck or he need a badly help just drop me his name okay write okay. me a mail yes sure or ping me yes sure yes sure right. so i guess the message is uh, clear now so there is no i'll i'll tell you the fact there is no going back now so you all will be the part of the mad soon sooner or later okay and once you will be part of the mad this is all expected from you and if you not able to perform the consequences is that there will be a trying to give you a handhold multiple time but if you fail every time then there will be a disciplinary action on it and okay. we don't want it to go towards that we want to uh, i mean that's why i encourage you to learn the thing yes sorry anyone want to say something uh am uh, i i just wanted to know one thing actually so what is now i uh, means uh, popular in the market uh, there is the three i uh, mean frame, frame react is not a framework react is library angular is another thing and view you are uh, going to train view uh, just tomorrow right right so uh, how is the popularity of vjs in the mix market you know we just have a one project on view and 10 people okay. in the learning mat who learns the, who okay. to know the view that's it and if we have a 11 we are not useful for learning mat we don't want 11 people for on the vjs because that there is a 10 there is no there is only one project in angular we have a lot of project in react we have a lot of project so i encourage yes, you yes, whenever sir. i mean if your project is with angular please uh, train yourself in the angular so you can okay. be deployed on the same project okay yes so we don't not, not want to learn i uh, mean uh, need to learn uh, vjs right no no okay. and it's not recommended also vjs is not recommended it's just for one project we are going for a session and it's not taken by me taken by the external trainer okay any other question nothing and thank you my for this session for your efforts yes thanks so much so really thank yes thank you my i'll try to catch up all these things as soon as possible sure thank you thank you everyone thank you for joining this session have a good day bye yes yes thank you bye thanks all bye